Nostalgia is something that I think most people have probably felt at one time or another. Oh, the good old days when you could buy eight pints of stout for five pounds, and assured atomic annihilation meant you didn't have to worry about the mortgage. Here I'm looking at not just film, but how the media in general exploits nostalgia, or rather, the nostalgia of a specific demographic. Now, before we begin, I think I should say that I'm not using the word exploit in a necessarily negative way. Movie and TV makers, video game developers, writers, they all know that audiences are more receptive to certain things than others. Audiences are often more receptive to certain eras for their works to be set in than others, just as they're more receptive to certain actors. Media usually is, to varying degrees, a formulated product. Nostalgia is the sentimentality we feel for a specific time. The type of feeling you might get when you find something from, or that is reminiscent of, the past. Whether that be an object, a trope, a sound, a smell, some sort of trigger that makes you think, Ah, the good old days, when I would while away the hours listening to the wireless. Everyone experiences nostalgia, eight-year-olds, hundred-year-olds, but most media that exploits nostalgia, it seems to me, aims to either recreate or bring back memories of something like 25 or 35 years before it. And that isn't to say that you have to be old enough to remember 35 years ago to be nostalgic for times around then. At the moment, there's a great deal of nostalgia for the 80s, and I think a lot of that comes from people who were born in the 80s. This is perhaps because they were exposed to classic 80s movies, The Empire Strikes Back, Back to the Future, Robocop, later on, on TV and because of sequels. This isn't always the case, however. I think whilst media can be nostalgic for certain times, it can also be nostalgic for other media from certain times. But more on that later. But anyway, the point is, nostalgic media is often set about 30-something years previously. That isn't a hard and fast rule, but just something I've observed. Back to the Future, which was made in the 80s, is set in the 50s. The book of It is too, but the film was changed to the 80s. Stephen King's The Body was adapted into Stand By Me, and they're both reminiscent of the 50s. Contemporary works such as Stranger Things, Glow, Ready Player One, and many more are evocative of the 80s. All the recent video games that use pixel art may do so because it can be easy, but I think for many of them, there is an element of nostalgia that shouldn't be overlooked. You see this outside of the media too. When I was growing up, there were lots of 60s and 70s themed bars, but now they've changed into 80s themed bars, with 60s and 70s themes really being more of a novelty. In fact, now you see more 90s themed nostalgia bars too. Ah, the 90s, that brief period of time after mutually assured destruction when we didn't know how good we had it just with domestic terrorism. There's no doubt more than one reason for the typical time frame. The most obvious, perhaps, is the audience that most enjoys media reminiscent of between two and three decades ago has the disposable income to consume it. They're not the largest demographic of cinema goers, but they do go, and they do buy associated merchandise and other tat. I believe that's the technical term. Directors of studio films, of course, don't make movies that are 100% products. I have to believe that. But seriously, I don't think it's unnatural for directors and other creators to want to return to a time that is nostalgic for them. It might not be a studio film, but This Is England, directed by Shane Meadows, is a good example of something I think clearly made with nostalgia. And incidentally, not always positive nostalgia. <laughs> this Is England is set in an area similar to that of which Meadows grew up in. One of its characters is a working class kid growing up in the 80s, who's about the same age Meadows would have been at that time and it feels as though much of what happens is at least informed by Meadows' own experiences. 
A bit further than the typical time frame for nostalgia in the media, F is for Family is a cartoon set in the early 1970s, and I don't think it's a coincidence that its creators were born in 1958 and 1968. The show might not entirely be shaped from real experiences. Some of it is drawn from Bill Burr's stand-up, but the fact that both creators lived through the 70s is, I think, critical to their show being set when it is. I think it would be fairly unusual if F is for Family was set in the 70s, but was created and written by people born in the 90s. This kind of bleeds into my next point about media being nostalgic for other media. What I mean is, Steven Spielberg clearly isn't old enough to have enjoyed the 1930s, another wonderful decade that didn't end badly. But Indiana Jones is clearly reminiscent of serials from that period. A film such as The Artist is a homage to early cinema, but I'm not sure I'd call Indiana Jones a homage. Certainly it is homaging its inspirational material at times, but the film isn't dependent on it, and I'd say it's more heavily inspired than it is a homage. I think it's this, as well as director's own preferences, naturally shaped by their age and their youth, that keeps certain ideas and certain genres recurring. Valerian and A Thousand Empty Seats would not have been the same had the director not encountered and become an enormous fan of the Valerian and Laureline comics in his youth. Maybe it's this reason we're seeing so many reboots right now. I mean, it's not. It's money and cheapness. But still, I think that good, honest, genuine nostalgia, whether that be for a certain time or for a certain way of making media, does contribute to the current glut of reboots, remakes, and spin-offs. As with anything else art-based, there's a spectrum, with corporate cynicism on one end and artistic integrity on the other when it comes to nostalgia. Movies and TV might depend on nostalgia to get noticed, but that doesn't mean they're not using it sincerely, even when they go over the top with it. It's really a fine line that boils down to something impossible to prove. Maybe the movie adaptation of Ready Player One is just cashing in on nostalgia from the 80s, 90s and 2000s by continually referencing pop culture from those times and by having a movie poster that looks as though it's a parallel universe version of the poster of Tron. But it could also be Steven Spielberg taking a trip down memory lane with a beer jacket and a bottle of schmaltz and the film's commercial nature is just a lovely coincidence. So there's the why. The how is pretty easy. Given that nostalgia is most easily evoked by smell and sound, it's no wonder that score is very important to media wanting to tick that nostalgia checkbox. Video games might use bit-crushed music, harking back to a more technologically constrained age just as something like Stranger Things uses synth not only to create tone, but to place it in the time it's set. What helps to sell new Jurassic Park films? The iconic music. For some people, that music isn't just synonymous with Jurassic Park, it's synonymous with their childhood, or at least a time of their lives. It's the same case with the music from the Terminator films, and the Star Wars music. Listening to the Star Wars theme now, it might take you back to when you first saw those movies. It might also get you excited for a new outing. Studios and TV companies know this, and that's why it's easy to exploit music to sell new movies, spin-offs and merchandise. But, also in creating feelings of nostalgia in movies and TV, or really, tapping into feelings that already exist in the audience, are certain things esoteric to either the era or the media being either replicated or at least hinted at. Want to evoke nostalgia for the 1970s? Well, people's clothes are flared and brown. Their hair is bad. They talk about the US bicentenary, wooden panels, soda streams, and how played out lava lamps are. Don't listen. You'll come back. Want to evoke a 70s TV show, and you want all of those things, but maybe you want a certain sort of grain to your footage, a different level of saturation, a select soundtrack. 
Maybe the set looks like a cheesy TV set from the 70s. Maybe there's canned laughter. Values are different. The way actors deliver their lines might be different. And what actors are able to say is different too. Strange creatures, women. Well, can't stand around all that. I knew one once. If you want to set your TV show in the 50s, you want people wearing 50s clothes. But if you want your TV show to be a TV show set in the 50s, you want high contrast black and white imagery. If a piece of media is nostalgic, again for either an era or for media from that era, it can capture an audience very easily with posters, thumbnails and advertisements because of how redolent font can be. Use the right accompanying imagery and you've done it. Whether that resonates with an audience past the superficial, I think probably comes down to how thick the nostalgia is layered on or how much it's pandered to, and whether it has a narrative purpose for being there, or if it's the movie equivalent of Walkmans, remember those? Boys to Men, remember those? This movie's a slasher movie, it's got nothing to do with the 80s, but we put some 80s font on the poster. Go and see it. Remember the 80s? Nothing to do with the 80s, but remember the 80s? Come and see our movie, please, we're desperate. I think nostalgia may be now experiencing a bit of fatigue, but even without that, it isn't enough to carry a movie. Unless it's Remember Those the Movie. Get me Spielberg. Back to the Future may have been an 80s film with 50s nostalgia, but the 50s setting was by no means a crutch. Mad Men's set era is important to the show, but I think while some people may have been attracted to it for its dressing, long-term viewers stayed with it for its writing and its stories. In short, appealing to senses of nostalgia and creating media that is either reminiscent of an era or media from an era is really pretty straightforward, but for movies and TV it does require a budget. It's used sometimes because of legitimate storytelling, sometimes because it appeals fairly broadly, just as actors, tropes and pop references can appeal fairly broadly and are used for that reason. That's all I have to say about how nostalgia is exploited and why. Exploiting some of the appeal of nostalgia myself in my never-ending quest for YouTube irrelevancy, next time I'll be talking about how the Robocop films changed over time. So, see you then, creep. Get me 100 fags, two bottles of wine, a bottle of whiskey and 10 cans of lager now.